Hi Now Weekender. I'm Rachel Picaro. I'm Kai Noah Carlson. we got a great show planned for you today as Hawaii State Art Museum is going to be hanging out the entire Hi Now Weekender. It's, it's a fun a show. It's a takeover. It's a That's takeover. What we're calling it, They're right? taking over. That's right. We're going to be uh, checking out some art, some music. We're going to have a demonstration on. So I'm excited to see what's going to be happening with Hi Sam. Yeah, I'm actually re really interested to just learn a little bit. They have a number of different programs and different exhibits that you can go and check out. And the best part, it's, it's free. free. Yeah. It's all about it's education and accessibility, so I'm really looking forward to learning myself. Me too. And one of the things that I love so much is music, so we've got a band. That's what we want to start it off with is yeah. the band. The band is called Men in Gray Suits, and I am men in Aloha shirts, but they sing a lot better than I do. <laughs> yeah, Take a do. look. <laughs> Give a big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege. Make some noise for Men in Gray Suits. <laughs> Hanaho, can we Hanaho men in gray suits? Yeah, they sound really that good. was super good, man. I'm ready to jam out. Okay, so now to get a little bit more information about Hawaii State Art Museum, all the programs they offer, we have Karen Ewald here joining us in the High Now studio. Uh, Karen, tell us a little bit about your involvement with uh, the art museum and a little bit of history. Yeah, I'm um, the interim executive director for the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. I'm also the director of the Hawaii State Art Foundation. I'm so happy to be here. Um, and the Hawaii State Art Museum is a a venue to hold contemporary art from local artists throughout the state of Hawaii. And I think over the years it just really exploded. You know, you guys have a lot of artists. We're talking about music. We're just having a whole bunch of people come together. So tell us about some of the programs that you guys have. And, and they're free. That's the best yeah. part. We're talking yeah. about we're that. We're always free, forever free. Um, we're really excited about that. We, we have uh, free public programming, evening events for adults, First Friday, Jazz Night, and then we also have family programming, Super Saturdays. Um, we have a partnership with Mayor's Office on Culture and the Arts doing Pa'ina Po'alima Nights, and um, it's really just a place for us to um, be able to be a space for creatives to gather and share their work, and um, 
and access and have that access to the public. I love that. Yeah, and I think what's really cool is because we're doing the high Sam takeover, you're going to be able to see a little bit of, a, of that. So we are going to have some uh, printmaking. Um, we're going to be doing, mm -hmm. yeah, we, you just saw some music. And then you'll be able to just get a little more educated on the programs that you guys have. Yeah. So the takeover is going to be a good time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're excited. We have Representative Sunny Gannett in here doing a demo. Um, Ellie Baxter, she's our curator. She's going to talk about the show. Um, Kamakani Konia is here to talk about the student art exhibition. Makanani from the Mayor's Office of Culture Arts is here as well to talk about our partnership, so we're excited. I love that, and what about uh, some of the collections as we take a look at some video here, what, what type of collections and pieces are located at the museum? Um, this is actually a part of our broader Art and Public Places collection, so when a building is built or renovated, we get 1% of that, that, um, that uh, money where we then purchase and display works of art throughout the entire state of Hawaii. So it's really excited, um, exciting, over 600 uh, sites and venues with over wow. 7,000 works of art that we rotate through. So the Hawaii State Art Museum is just one example, or one venue to hold all the beautiful contemporary works of art that we can showcase in Hawaii. And again, forever free. I feel like that should be like one of the hashtags. <laughs> Hawaii State Art sure, Museum, forever, forever free. free. Come yes. and check us out. I love that you guys are just constantly rotating because all the creators, they're constantly making new things and yeah. being inspired by whatever, you know, in the community. So it's nice to have that rotation and just constantly have new things. Yeah, yeah. we're always acquiring, always um, keeping our finger on the pulse of what is the contemporary art scene in Hawaii. We're always striving to do that. Okay, now if uh, local artists want to get in touch with you folks and, and they have a collection, what is the best way or uh, how does that relationship take place? They would want to go to highsam.hawaii.gov and reach out to us and we can tell them the process that it takes to, to get potentially into the collection. I'm only asking because I have a couple of sketches <laughs> from eighth grade. Oh man. That. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah. That'll be a quick rotation. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a qu quick rotation. But thank you so much. Again, it's a Hawaii State Art Museum takeover. We're going to have much more coming up. Stay tuned. We are really excited to feature Accessions, that's the title of the exhibition. Um, it is the most recent acquisitions from the Art and Public Places collection. And um, it's a general survey of contemporary art in the, throughout the state of Hawaii. We have ceramic art, we have large scale paintings, we have small sculpture, and they're all from artists in Hawaii, of Hawaii, and are particularly excited to showcase some fantastic contemporary works of art from our native Hawaiian artists. There are two artists in the exhibit uh, that are showcasing contemporary kapa. We have Rowan Hufford and Bernice Akamine. They are fantastic contemporary kapa works that we're so happy to display here at Heisen. Once the works of art are exhibited here for the remainder of the year, then they'll be sent out statewide, over 500 sites for placement. The Art in Public Places program is actually the first in the nation. Hawaii is proud to be the first in the nation to enact the Percent for Art law, where 1% of construction and renovation goes to the state foundation to then acquire works of art for public buildings for all to enjoy. We also use the 1% funds for education, arts education throughout the state. If you're downtown and if you're uh, visiting in this area, please stop by. Um, we're always free, we're air conditioned, and uh, we are a space that always provides something. If it's not acquisitions from the collection, contemporary art, it's a student art show, it's uh, the most beautiful sculpture garden. And we do provide fantastic public programming. We do live music, sometimes fashion shows. It's always different and eclectic. We're so proud to be the one space that not only showcases the most recent contemporary art in Hawaii, but also a space where creatives come to gather, collaborate, share. We just find ourselves to be a very unique space down here. I just love watching people come through the doors, whether they're from Hawaii or visiting and never had been here before. And to just see the surprise and happiness on their face to know that this place exists for free for them is fantastic. And I also just really love working with the people who work for us. It's a great team and we do such good work throughout the state.
Okay, very cool. A lot of unique pieces uh, featured in that collection. Right now, we're joined by the curator for the Art in Public Places program. This is Ellie Baxter. How's it, Ellie? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. That was a very cool uh, piece we just came out of, and yes. we, we were speaking as it was going on. You helped curate a lot of that collection. Tell us about that. Yeah, curated uh, several of those exhibitions, because that was footage from um, numerous exhibitions. Um, the exhibition that has just recently opened is mm -hmm. the Accession, re uh, recent additions to the Art and Public Places collection. Um, and I curated that um, exhibition. Okay, tell us about that new collection. Um, so uh, the recent pieces, um, I selected work that is a wide variety of media and also artists from different islands um, so that you have a big variety um, of uh, sculptures, uh, fiber art, paintings. So really it's yep. all kinds of variety. It's definitely a big variety of artwork. Yeah. Okay, now Ellie, as a curator, I'm curious, uh, when you step into a place or when you're looking at artwork and you're deciding what piece of art is going to go where, what is that uh, experience well, like? It depends if you're, uh, when I'm curating for the museum, then I have complete control over this space and designing it. But when you're picking out pieces and helping people select for an office space, then you gotta work within the office space and how they work with the space so that the artwork is safe and looks good. Okay, uh, speaking of office space, Rachel and I, our office is right up there. <laughs> Come take a look it, after. It you have has time? to be a public <laughs> and it has to be a state. Shucks. Building. Okay. Yes, uh, well, and that's what we're talking about. So art in public places. Uh, let's talk about some of the places that artwork is, is featured around and um, in connection with you folks. Yeah. So we have 600 sites around all of the islands. And uh, we have like it, libraries, schools, uh, different state offices, and also like the Capitol. We've been... Um, there recently since they've had a big changeover. Uh -huh. And this is across the state, right? Not just yes. Oahu. Yeah, this is across the state. So with the uh, new, uh, new collection, talk about some of the other pieces that are, that are featured in that and how long do the pieces kind of stay, uh, stay where they are? So um, when they go out to a site in the public, they stay, um, the rotation schedule is every four to seven years. Um, the accession exhibition will be up throughout the year. Um, if you want to talk about one of the pieces in the show, on the front wall is the uh, sculptures by Miley Yawada. Um, it's called the Taquan series, and they were inspired by pickled daikon. <laughs> oh, very cool. And what is that uh, relationship like with you folks and, and the local artists who are, who are coming to you folks? Because it's a unique thing to, to be an artist from here and uh, to see your piece featured yeah. at the Capitol and all these different places. Yeah, I mean, no, it's great. They're very excited, of course. and. Um, <laughs> Uh, their inspiration just comes from all over the place, so that's really interesting to see. Like something like, you know, um, Takwan Pickles. Yeah. And who would have thought that? But the characters um, have this kind of grumpy and um, curious and also funny. Um, so, yeah, and she actually did deliver me some um, Daikon. <laughs> <laughs> and then what about the, the scale? Like the scale in terms of, because we're talking sculptures and then painted yeah. pieces, so we can do office walls to full-blown so office buildings? Yes, you do have or? to consider that one. Um, when I, I put committees together, um, and we go to juried or curated exhibitions, and then they recommend pieces for the collection. And we talk about scale, and we talk about you know what works in on office space. Um, but you know, there are a lot of different spaces out there since we have over 600 sites. Absolutely. And so we have a lot of different kinds of artwork, and there are a lot of different uh, people in the public looking at different kinds of work, so people are interested in all different kinds of ideas. And Speaking of that, Ellie, if people are interested, local artists, uh, in getting in touch with more information about Arts and Public Places uh, program, what is the best way to do They should go to our website, for sure, to look there. And like I said, it's um, we go to curated and juried exhibitions, um, so they should, um, people should apply. Uh, you can apply online if you have a juried or curated exhibition that you want us to come visit. They have to just do it four months in advance. Okay, cool. Well, mahalo for being here, Ellie, and all the good information. Don't go anywhere. More coming up from the Hawaii State Art Museum. It's a high now takeover coming up after the break. Welcome back to High Now Weekend. They're the High Sam Takeover. We had Karen on earlier uh, to talk about art at the Capitol. We're gonna uh, discuss that a little more. And then now we're joined by Representative Sonny Ganadin. Hi. All right, Sonny, now, I mean, you have some experience with printmaking. I know you're a lawyer, an artist, and of course, now you are representative. But tell us about how you got your start with printmaking. Um, I was in law school and I didn't enjoy it very much. And then <laughs> I uh, um, just decided to go to the Honolulu Printmakers, which um, 
was on Baratania Street and I became a printmaker. And it's really just been a part of my life ever since. And uh, you know, life gets sometimes kind of stressful and sometimes you make art. Wow, do you see a lot of connection with um, the art that you create and then kind of like a high stress job with being involved as a rep? Like, yeah. is there connections? Is that a good outlet or are they cross? Look at that. Ooh. I made an image of the state seal. Here, we're gonna keep making them. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, the cool thing about art is you get to be part of a process. And so you're not really so much um, end goal oriented. You're engaged with um, your own mind, sometimes other people in developing an idea and seeing it to fruition. Oftentimes in politics or law or things like that, you are told to just really get to the solution. And um, artwork doesn't work like that. You know, you have to like let yourself, give yourself the freedom to, to move and to develop. And, um, and I like that. And I said you, I mean, earlier you were saying that you like printmaking because you can make multiples and it's just not one and done. Yeah. Just keep going with it. Yeah. Um, so printmaking has a real history here in the state of Hawaii. If you think about uh, how literate um, not only Native Hawaiians were, but other ethnic groups were during the 19th century, so many of those printing presses were repurposed for art over the years. And some of the most famous images in Hawaii that we all kind of grew up with, they are prints. And um, yeah, and it's, and it's really a lovely art form to be a part of. Also, it's connected to social justice. Um, there were folks like, um, uh, the Protect Kahot Lave movement and other organizations that they use prints to hand out to tell people about their, um, their work because you know they couldn't uh, get it out in the newspapers at the time. So printmaking really is connected to democracy. Speaking of, there's a uh, there's a unique thing taking place, right, Karen? The one percent and it's art at the Capitol. Can you break down what that is for people who don't know? Yeah, actually, Hawaii was the first state in the nation to have this law, the one percent for art law. Um, every uh, time, of, of, like I said prior, every time a building is uh, constructed or renovated, a state building I should say, 1% of the funds for that go to us, uh, the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts, and we then uh, purchase works of art uh, from contemporary Hawaii artists to rotate throughout the state. We also do large scale commission works of art. Um, for site-specific um, places like buildings, and with that 1% funding, we do arts education in hundreds of schools throughout the state as well. That's amazing, and that's kind of what keeps uh, the programs uh, sustainable here and keep them free, right? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Always free. We want to make sure that um, we're unique and that we want to make sure that the art is accessible to the public. Um, and also engaging, we want to engage the public with the art as well, which is why the arts education programs that we have with the 1% funding is so necessary. Yeah, okay, and uh, Sonny, what's going on with uh, Art at the Capitol? What can people expect with that? Um, art at the Capitol is gonna be much bigger and funner this year. Um, <laughs> we're, grateful to, we're grateful for the work of um, retired Senator Brian Taniguchi, who uh, led the charge for the last 11 years. Mm -hmm. This year, we're expanding the program significantly. We're gonna have the Hawaii International Film Festival downstairs showing some films cool. um, the Hawaii contemporary they do the triennial they're gonna be um, having a panel and showing some images from protests over the few years um, let's see who else is here the ballet Hawaii ballet the Hawaii Theater Sorio for Band Youth is playing. Yeah. Uh, professor John Osorio and his daughter Jamaica they're gonna be performing we're gonna there. just activate the whole capital yeah I, and the doors open all uh, the legislators open their doors so that they can actually interact with the public and the artists come and interpret their work as well. Yeah, we, oh, we want. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, we want to. Oh, so. No, that's taking place on yeah. April 14th. Yeah, yeah, April 14th, beginning at 4:30 uh, p.m. So yeah. Yeah. And then come by the Hawaii State Art Museum afterwards for our Vibe Jazz Night. Okay, That's there right. you go. There's uh, something for everyone. <laughs> and uh, while we've been going and talking, um, Sunny, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing? We have so many prints here, but how does the process start? Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways to do printmaking. Okay. Um, this one is a linoleum, like a, like a lino cut, like we're standing on linoleum. All I did was carve it. Um, now I did a blend roll, and I did my best to... Uh, Match the ladies' dress. Look at that! Yeah, yeah. Um, cool, man. And so, um, 
And so I, because I'm a state worker, I uh, kind of redid the state seal as a gift to people. And, wow. How yeah. long did that take to do the seal? I honestly don't know. <laughs> like, I, I go home and I watch basketball and I hang out with my cat and I carve and that's how I chill out after a long that irritating day. Nice. Create some good, yeah, nice. create some good art pieces in the process. Because yeah. it looks very intricate, like it took quite some time. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, it's, a lot of my life I live by the clock and so, so often art doesn't work like that. You know, you have to just go with the flow and let the process take you. Much like government. Uh, go, yeah, <laughs> government, take, government does take a long time. And, um, you know, we want to also let people know that uh, they paid for it, you paid for it. So if you ever bought a soda from the liquor store, then um, you paid for this with your tax dollars. And, you know, we want you to know that it's the people's um, art. It's the people's art. It's yours. And um, the state has become the repository for some of the finest pieces of local art going all the way back to the territory. And we have an opportunity, those of us in government, to work amongst beauty. And we want to share that with people. That's Absolutely. what it's all about. Yes. Accessibility and sharing art with people. Don't forget, Art at the Capitol, April 14th. Don't go anywhere. More from the Hawaii State Art Museum coming up in just a little bit. We are in the Hawaii State Art Museum on the bottom floor. I had an opportunity to explore the ocean and I want everybody to come and explore it with me too. And so um, Honolulu Theater for Youth are staging a performance that take children from the shallows into deeper and deeper water. And we wanted to create a, a backdrop. And we also wanted to highlight our phytoplankton and our zooplankton, all the microorganisms that allow life to exist on Earth. And we need to thank them and we need to recognize them. They did all the dots on top of an underpainting that I did of light, white, blue walls that transition into darkness. And so we were exploring the idea of instead of depth going from shallow to deep, we went shallow to deep. There's close to, I would guess, about half a million dots, maybe, fingers crossed. But over time, we intend to continue to add dots to this wall as a collaborative art piece, a community art piece that is also fine art. And that's something that's really important to me. This current mural is going to exist indefinitely. I mean, it'll, it has a time limit, so we, we want people to come in and be involved. But the idea that we can continue to add dots and, top and dots and more dots, and then if we run out of space, we'll add dots on top of dots, and then dots on top of dots on top of dots. There are so many reasons to have hope, and there's so many reasons to care. Every single dot is a, a affirmation, is a, a commitment that somebody says, I care about what's going on, I care about the oceans, and I care about community. When we think about art and contemporary art, Usually it's the artist and their canvas and nobody can touch it, right? It's, and that's important, but I think for a very, very long time, I would even say thousands and thousands of years, we've been collaborating, we've been painting the walls of our, of our homes in you know, collaborative art mural projects all around the world. And so I really want to highlight the idea that artwork can both be made by an individual, but it can also be amalgamated out of the hands of many. And so in a way, I'm sort of like a maestro and I get to wave my brushes sort of like, you know, the batons and the community brings the music. And I just have to do a little editing, a little, a little post-production touch-ups here and there. But in general, it's giving access for the community to celebrate community. Art has allowed me to understand that if I could change a piece of paper, then I could change a canvas. If I can change the canvas, then I can change myself. If I can change myself, I can change the room. If I can change a room, I can help to change a neighbor, neighborhood, a community, a planet. So it's an example of how we can make positive change. It, it only takes a little bit of paper and pencil as proof. Whenever the space is open, we absolutely encourage families, young and less young, to come and be involved in this art project. We've got lots of pens and there's a lot more space. There's always going to be room for people to make a contribution, to add their dots, to make their marks. Hi now, 
Now Weekender. I'm here with Ali Ishi Kuni. She is the pro, uh, public programmer at High Sam. I mean, that is a very busy job, I have to say, because you are the one responsible for bringing these incredible uh, productions and outings for people to come and enjoy. So thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you. All right, well, let's talk about what goes behind each of these events. And let's talk about First Friday. Yeah, so First Friday, you know, really it's an event where you can experience and see art in all types of forms. Um, we have live dancers, we have live bands, music, fashion shows, and even drag shows sometimes. So yeah, there's a lot to see and experience. A lot to see. And I mean, previously, some of the uh, performers that you've had, maybe yeah. list some. Yeah, so at this previous event, we had Men in Grey Suits, which you've probably seen in the yes. beginning segment. Mm -hmm. So there's always a wide variety of genres. So there's always mixing up from like jazz to rock to hip hop. So it's always new. And then there's food. There's got to be food, Oh, right? yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of sweet and savory. So some of our popular food vendors are like Ole's Thai. I'm sure mm. you've heard of them. They're yes. in Chinatown. Um, we have Middle Eats, who is Middle Eastern cuisine. Um, we also have some dessert vendors. So like cool beans, they have pastries and coffee. So yeah, a lot to try. And then, I mean, there's a bar there as well, yes, right? Yes, of course. I yeah, mean, we got drinks on the little nice. So yeah, he can enjoy the music and, and drink at the same time. Yeah. Beautiful. So this is First Fridays, and this happens every First Friday yes, of the month. Yes, every First Friday of the month from 6 to 9 p.m. From 6 to 9 p.m. And uh, when you come, you have to get tickets. You got to no. register or anything no, like that? No, not at come all. Down. You can just walk in and just enjoy the night. Awesome. And then you guys also have something called Super Saturdays. Yes, yes. What so is that? Super Saturdays. It's a very special event, so it's really catered for the cake and the families and it's free workshops throughout the entire museum so we have like eight to ten workshops um that's from break dancing to music making to ceramics to premium it's just a wide variety of types of things you could do and that's another thing where you can just show up yes. and hang out with the families yes. yeah and it's a day event so it's from 11 to 3 so yeah. and there's also going to be food and some other things that they can kind of hang out take, yeah. and be there for the day exactly yeah so you can support our food vendors and there's also live music to enjoy awesome well i gotta bring my kids to that yeah. because i think uh this is kind of like an upgraded uh you know arts and crafts oh totally yeah. and i couldn't <laughs> do what you guys do so definitely something you should check out that super Saturday we've got the first Fridays but you also have the vibe yes yes so the vibe is our outdoor concert is our jazz night um, and that's held in our sculpture garden our beautiful sculpture garden um, it's from 6 to 9 p.m. and it highlights some of our best musicians here in Honolulu yeah I love that so I mean between those three events you really have something going on at high sound but we've got more information on the vibe we were able to go out there and check it out a little earlier so watch this he is an inventive, boundary-pushing trumpeteer. Make a lot of noise and give a big aloha and a big Hawaiian welcome right now, not only to the Dehan Ensemble, featuring our special guest tonight, give it up for Takuya Kuroda, ladies and gentlemen. So Vibe is a, uh, it's a jazz night here at the museum. Uh, it happens every second Friday of the month from 6 to 9. The Dehan Ensemble is the house band that plays every Vibe second Friday. Um, and then they'll bring in different guests, guest artists. Um, we've had guest artists from New York. We've had a couple that came in from, I believe, Japan. It takes a little time to get them started, but once they get started, the pool fills up pretty fast. Once the groove starts going, the dance floor fills up. And it's a pretty cool spot to dance because it used to be, uh, I believe it used to be the pool when this was a uh, YMCA. So it's, uh, it looks it looks like you're dancing on water and it's, uh, it's a cool little spot to really get down. We have the Palhana Painters that paint live uh, every Friday, every Vibe Friday. Uh, there's, I think, six or seven artists and they'll put up a canvas and then just paint the whole night. And some of the stuff is pretty incredible to watch. I, I think it's just an incredible night to spend at the museum. I mean, what, what a treat to be able to come in for free, to experience not only art, but music, to have your community just out there dancing and joining and really celebrating the arts and, and music and everything that Hi Sam has really put together has just been an incredible treat for me personally to be involved with. Um, and just the overall vibe is, uh, is just amazing. <laughs> We have food, uh, we have different uh, vendors, food vendors that will feature um, depending
the Friday. Uh, we have a bar too. It has uh, beer and wine, and then some uh, sodas and non-alcoholic drinks. Um, really, I'm gonna try a lot of it. It's really, really, really good stuff that you won't find anywhere else, and it's just kind of. Now weekend, or we are doing a high sound takeover, and right now I'm with Kamakani Konia. How's it going? Hi, doing great, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, we have an upcoming, well, actually, it's happening right now, but it will be going for just a, a bit longer. And I'm talking about the Arts Award. Is that correct? Yeah, so the Hawaii Regional Scholastic Art Awards uh, exhibition is happening now at the Hawaii State Art Museum. It's running until March, uh, May 6. And it features 250 works of art from student artists from across the state. Uh, it's part of the National Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. It's a national art competition, um, the longest running art student art competition in the country. And our regional exhibition represents uh, the best award-winning entries uh, from the Hawaii region. So we're really excited to have it at the Hawaii State Art Museum. And those are entries from all across the state, from what, 49 schools, is that correct? Correct, 49 schools. Uh, we've had uh, 
a new participation record this year. So we've had uh, 2,800 entries um, from the Hawaii region into the competition. Um, and we're really excited to work with um, a team of judges from across the Pacific made up of artists and administrators who narrowed down those 2,800 um, entries to the 250 uh, award-winning works that you'll see at the Hawaii State Art Museum. Awesome, and there must be some criteria that those judges have to hit um, when they are looking at all of these um the artwork that comes through, like what are some of those? Yeah, so there's three main criteria that we ask the judges to look for whenever they're reviewing artwork. Uh, the first one is originality, so we want to make sure that the works of art are, you know, of the student's own creation, so, you know, no Dragon Ball Z fan <laughs> art or anything like that. Uh, the second is technical skill. Uh, we want to see how the students are able to uh, kind of understand the medium, um, and you know, kind of see their technical prowess with understanding, um, you know, like photography or uh, drawing or and composition and things like that. And the final and the most important criteria we like to really emphasize is the emergence of a personal vision or voice. Um, we really want to see the students um, just pull out all the stops and just uh, leave everything on the canvas, so to speak, uh, whenever they're creating art and submitting art to this competition because we really want to see their creativity and expression shine through here. Absolutely. And then um, now just moving on, talking a little bit about the event. It, like I said, it's going on now, but when will that last show? Uh, so it's happening um, now until May 6 at the Hawaii State Art Museum. Uh, we are open from uh, Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, parking is available at Ali'i Place and there's also metered stalls available on Richard Street and um, at Iolani Palace as well. Uh, so we're, and the events, of course, like for all of the exhibits at the Hoy State Art Museum are all free to the public. So uh, the only thing you gotta pay for is parking. So. Awesome, well, that's not bad at all. Now, I mean, the only other thing that I wanted to mention was that it's in a different spot at the, at High Sound. This is in the Eva Gallery. That's something different, right? Yeah, so uh, traditionally we've had the uh, Scholastic Art Awards exhibition um, at, at High Sound in our turnaround gallery, which is a smaller space. Um, over the years, we've had to kind of um, do a salon style installation where it's essentially hundreds and hundreds of pieces of student artwork all stacked on the wall um, in rows. Uh, so, you know, you'll typically have uh, 40 to 30 pieces uh, on top of each other on one single wall. But this year we've um, moved to the Eva Gallery um, of the Hawaii State Art Museum. So we now have an entire uh, gallery wing available for student artwork. So um, it's still a little cramped, uh, but we were able to curate the, um, the work better this year um, to make kind of flow nicer and just to give the kids uh, a little bit more wall space that they deserve. So it's really exciting. Awesome, and then for the students, how do they uh, get involved if they want to submit their artwork for next year's? Yeah, sure. So the competition typically opens um, in September. Uh, for students looking to get involved with the competition, they can visit the, um, the national website at artandwriting.org. Um, or they can also visit the um, State Foundation on Culture and the Arts website at sfca.hawaii.gov to learn more about um, our student exhibitions such as, you know, Scholastics and our Young Artists of Hawaii exhibition as well for the younger kids. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me and we have more about the Scholastic Award. Yeah, my favorite part about this job in particular is getting able to have guests connect to the pieces. You know, when they tell me, wow, I never saw that that way. Gallery interpreter, when many people hear that term, they think of docents at the museum. But we try to do things a little differently here at the museum instead of trying to give you a little lecture on the history and the timeline of these events of art creation we try to get people to connect to the art. So we find these little points of connection through conversation, dialogue, to get people attached to these work of art. So might as well get used to the things we have in collection and appreciate it because this museum collects it all. Yeah, this exhibit is the Scholastic Student Art Show. We have it every year around March to May time. And this specific iteration of it has 250 artists from across the many Hawaiian islands showcasing over 17 different categories of beautiful work. We have ceramics, portraiture, photography. We're really expansive in the things we try to show off from our lovely students. There's a competition that happens every year for this uh, exhibition and that competition is open to anyone who is resident of Hawaii in the grades 7th to 12th grade. 
anyone can apply and then it's juried and then we see the people who make it to the shortlist over here in the museum. And you'll notice that some of the artworks have a golden key or a silver key or award stickers. Those are the really exceptional pieces that we want to highlight as the State Foundation of Culture and the Arts. So this is a hopefully capturing a many different attitudes and student emotions from around the many islands of Hawaii. We try not to keep it centralized here in Honolulu. We try to expand to the outer islands or even areas of Oahu, which are typically not seen in these kinds of exhibits, like the west side. We have many entries this year, very expansive stuff, and it's great to see all the different kinds of expressions we have. Yeah, the student artwork is always very unique every year. The one thing that keeps getting brought up is how much teenage angst is in the Scholastic show, but that's just part of growing up, right? Finding that voice, finding our own expression, finding what style fits us the best. And you'll see some of these students, they have so many connections with people from different islands, different high schools, and they don't even realize it until they're exhibited here at the museum. So all these people living in similar communities, experiencing similar things, and connecting through shows like this. Come, it's free. Now it's no charge, it's a government funded institution, so might as well enjoy it. We have plenty of events all the time, first Friday, second Friday. We always try to keep it lively and alive here at the Hawaii State Art Museum. Every year it changes up, so it's always a good time around March to May time to come visit the museum and check out what our local Keiki and students are up to nowadays. You know, the 60th annual Scholastic Regional Art Awards is a very special time. And the fact that Hawaii has been participating in this national competition for 60 years is a very beautiful thing. I believe now nationally we are on the 100th year of this program, but Hawaii has been part of it for 60. Feel free to come and enjoy, no charge at all. Check out what our local students are producing and creating. Aloha and welcome back to High Now Weekender. It has been a great show getting a chance to learn all about Hawaii State Art Museum. We brought Karen back in to recap what has been a, a good hour. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> I loved having all of the guests come on and share about what Hi Sam is doing, upcoming events, and how people can get involved and really support what you folks are doing. So let's recap. Tell everybody where they should be this month, next month, all the good stuff. Yeah, we have a slate of programming. We're very excited. For the month of April, we have a First Friday event. Um, like we've discussed, uh, we have Art at the Capitol and Jazz Night um, and Paina Poalima. And then in the future events, you can go to our website and find out when the Super Saturdays are and when the other kind of unique events are. And um, just by coming to visit us, it really uh, supports local artists. Definitely, and again, Hawaii State Art Museum forever free. Forever so free. many of the things that you folks do is all about affordability and accessibility. So the fact that these events are free, guys, come on out, support your local artists. It's all good fun. That's right, and you wanna make sure you follow them on social media as well, because I feel like everybody's always on Instagram these days, and that's a great way to stay up to date with what you guys are doing. Um, besides all the things that we talked about today, you guys have some other pop-up events. So yeah. that's a great way to find out about more information. Definitely, follow us on Instagram. It's at Hawaii State Art Museum, one word, and um, we're, we're pretty active with it, so that's the best way to get the information. Karen, mahalo for coming in, and to all the guests for coming in. I feel like I've learned so much about the art museum and the fact that truly, regardless if you're family, young professional, the museum has something for everybody. Absolutely, I'm already excited to do the Super Saturday, bring my keiki over there. Free arts and crafts, but it's upgraded. Not stuff I do at home with them, which is just, you know, coloring. You mm -hmm. guys do so much more. So much yeah, more. Yeah, we're Nani was talking about the Pauhana. I was like, I'm there. Yeah. That sounds yeah. fun. I know almost left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pauhana was now. Um, <laughs> well, it's the People's Museum, so we want everybody to feel welcome. Art is accessible to all people. We want everybody to, to experience art in a, the best way possible, which is free. So. so Well, thank you so much for joining us today yeah. and everything you folks are doing at High Sound. Of course, we're going to have everything on HainalDaily.com, and we will see you on Monday. Aloha. Thank you.